Hey guys, this is Dunn with Fellowship of the Martyrs. Coming to you from Liberty, Missouri. I want to make a video today. Um, and this is, if we were doing, um, like in college, where you have like English 101, and then you have like advanced composition 420 or whatever, right before you graduate, this would be like graduate classes. Um, I don't know. I don't know that this applies to very many people, but I want to record it. I, I know it's revelation, inspiration from the Lord, and deep wisdom. Um, so I, I want to record it for you and see who it might apply to. Uh, one of the things that. I have dealt with in this walk I'm fiddling here sorry uh, one of the things I've dealt with in this walk and I know that other people have dealt with when they're walking at a real high level um, as I've read uh, in past revival history Reese Howells and Daniel Nash and George Fox and other people is that there are times when um, the Lord is telling you stuff and it doesn't necessarily work out the way you thought. Well, naturally, our interpretation is the flawed piece of that. God is true. And there are times when we think something is going to happen in the natural, and it's happening in the spirit. He says, I'm going to bless you abundantly, and you think, great, a million dollars is coming, and he means he's going to teach you patience, or something else equally valuable. Um, we, we've got to understand his economy doesn't focus obsessively on dollars, as much as ours does. Um, humility, brokenness, um, you know, peace are tremendously valuable. Wisdom. So, but there's something that he's been telling me for a long time um, is part of why he loves me and part of why I'm useful to him. Um, and I want to use um, chess as a parable, as an analogy for this. So I'm going to cut to another shot here uh, with a different camera and just talk about this a little bit. Okay? Thanks. Okay, guys. Um, <clears throat> this is a chessboard. Never mind the numbers on it. <clears throat> and I've just got the white pieces set up here. But I want to, I want to talk to you, and there's me shooting me, talking to you, talking to me. Anyway, I want to uh, try to use this to illustrate um, the Lord, when you're playing chess, you understand that these guys, the pawns, are offensive weapons, but they're not particularly valuable. On the first move, they can move two forward, otherwise they only move one spot at a time. They can attack to the sides, but they can't attack directly head on. So they are limited in how they can be used. And there's lots of them, and they're fairly expendable. Um, the castle only moves this way in straight lines from their position. Now, he can move, he can move one, or he can move all the way across the board in one swipe, but he can only move at right angles like that. Um, the, the, the horse, the, um, he can move over two and over one. He, that's the only direction he can move. So he would move da, da, over or da, da, over or da, da, over, but it's always this L shape and that's the only direction he, that's the only way he can move. So there are ways where he can't get you. Uh, the knight... He moves at diagonals like this, um, but he's always going to be, like this one's always going to be stuck on red squares, and this one's always going to be stuck on black squares, um, because he can only move at an angle like that. So he's useful because he can move one, or he can move all the way across the board, um, like the castle can, but... Um, um, he, he's more useful than the rook, but 
Um, now the king, he can only move one move at a time. He can move in whatever direction, but he can only move one square. So he's limited in his ability to attack. Uh, the queen, however, the queen, however, can be moved like the castle, can be moved like the knight, can move one square, can attack in any direction like the king, and can basically be used to control a whole lot of the board and to attack in a whole lot of different directions. Now, um, all of these pieces um, have a very limited expression of how they can move. They have clear expectations of how they can move, and it has to happen within those parameters. And they are more limited um, in, in how they can attack. Um, they are useful to varying degrees for varying attacks, but none of them are as useful as the queen. Now, times when the Lord has said, okay, we're going this direction, and I expect it, I plan on it, I've got my heart set on it, and then the Lord says, oops, sorry, something happened, other people didn't obey, the game didn't go the way I thought it might go, other things are out of position, instead of moving this way, we're going to move you over here. And I'm like, but Lord, uh, I thought that the plan was to move this way. Uh, yep, but situation changed. I can do whatever I want with you. You said you would do whatever. You said that it wouldn't hurt your faith if I uh, rotated you, if we changed position. So you are more useful to me because I can do whatever I want with you and move you into any position without it hurting your faith, without it changing um, your nature, whatever. So um, if he was to, you know, tell this piece to start moving diagonally across the board, he can't do that. He, he can't. He is ingrained that he can only do this. And it would destroy his sense of self. It would destroy his faith. It would whatever if all of a sudden he, he started moving like a piece that he's not and doesn't understand how to be. Um, So I guess the summary of this is the pieces that are the most valuable to the Lord are the ones that will allow him to completely shuffle their lives at any moment, rework whatever, even down to family, job, money, everything, and allow him to completely rewrite whatever he's doing. Let me flip back to the other camera now. Now, not to say that there's not value. The knight moves in a way that the queen can't replicate. She can't do the two moves over and one, two, two over and one over, you know, two up and one over. He's the only one that can do that. And there are times when he's the one that you really need. Even though she's got more flexibility and is more powerful, and if you do get your pawn to the other side of the board, you get to be upgraded, promoted, you want one of these, most likely not one of these. But there are times when you really have to have one of these. <coughs> so it's it's not to infer that the queen is supreme, that, that, that all you need is her or whatever. However, if you had a chessboard with eight pawns, seven queens, and one king, I would think I would think that would that game would be over fast if he's got all the regular pieces and you got seven queens and one king. Um, I know that there have been a lot of times when the Lord sets my heart a certain direction, says this is the plan, this is what we're going to do, this is, the, this is what's going to happen. Because he says he always tells his prophets what he's doing. He has to let us know. He has to telegraph us to us what, what he's planning. But then there's always accommodations. This is a, a, a constantly changing battlefield. 
um, the best soldiers are the ones that can adjust for whatever changes the battlefield requires. Um, the ones that are limited in their ability to move, uh, to attack, are not going to be as valuable as the ones that can be used for anything at any time. Um, if the Lord said to me, okay, forget it, people aren't going to go, liberty's not going to happen, I want you in Africa, walk away, don't look back, I'd go, no problem, because I can do that and trust the Lord fully. Thank you. Um, and it doesn't hurt my faith. And even though he's made me all these promises about liberty, even though he's shown me all these scenarios of what's coming and what to expect and what to pray for and cry out for, if he said, you know what, that's what I wanted, and that was the plan, and that was the goal, but, you know, not everybody's getting in line, not everybody's doing what they're supposed to do, not everybody's sacrificing, so psh, that's it, we're done. Um, never mind. And you would say, well, God is true. He, God never changes his mind. Well, clearly he does. There's plenty of verses where God relented of the evil that he had planned for them. He, he, after Bathsheba, he told David, I'm going to punish you for three days. And after two days, the Lord let him up and said, "That's he's had enough. I'm, so they're clearly, if you look up, God relented in the King James. Just do a word search. There's a ton of verses where God even repented of the evil that he had planned for them. And that doesn't mean he, he agreed that he had done wrong and said he was sorry, but just simply that he turned. He didn't confess his sins. He just turned from where the direction he was going because they cried out to him, because whatever. Um, let me try this again. I'm not sure this is sinking in. There are those who have heard from the Lord, this is what's going to happen. They've, they've written it on their heart, they've felt it, they've prayed for it, they've begged for it, and then all of a sudden the Lord says, sorry, it's not going to work out that way. We're not going to do that now. But Lord, you promised. But Lord, you've told me over and over. But Lord, I had dreams and visions. But, you know... And he says, yeah, but you said I could do whatever I wanted you with you. You said that, that you wouldn't even make my promises an idol. We're not to worship any created thing. And even a promise from God is still a created thing. So if we put nothing else above him, then even if he says, you're mine, you're going to heaven, we should still be willing to lay that down. Any anything, any goal, any dream, any whatever, even promises from Him, we should we should be willing to say, Lord, you do whatever you want with me, and if you change your mind, you're the king. You can do that. Have your way. You know, the queen's job is to defend the king, to attack as he says, to defend as he says, and uh, to be totally. De you know, the, the the point is the king. The queen is the closest to him. Um, apple of his eye, whatever, and he gives her the most authority to, to defend, chess speaking wise. Our role as the bride should be that. We should not be sending Jesus out front to kick everybody when he calls us to go be his hands and feet. He calls us to go do the work. And we should do it with a constant focus that he is the point not our own glorification or showing how strong the queen is, but winning the game means protecting the king and taking out the other guy. Um, I want this to be a word of encouragement to those of you that feel like promises have been stripped out from under you or that it doesn't look like there's any way that it's going to go the way you thought it was going to go. If you prayed something like, Lord, use me however you see fit, he can do that. He can reboot things anytime he wants for his glory, and you don't, you don't really have a right to complain about it, and you should be blessed and honored. You should see it as a really good thing that he trusts you enough 
that he can change the whole makeup of the situation and believe that you can survive, that it won't destroy your faith, that it won't force you to curse him, it won't, it won't turn you against him. You'll grumble and you'll go, I don't get it, I don't understand, but I love you, and even though you slay me, yet I will serve you, oh God. Okay, that guy... That guy can be used for anything. That that sister can be used for anything. They can be moved around, things walk away, don't look back, leave your job, family. What that person is valuable to the Lord because they will they are willing to be used for anything without turning against him. Some of them, they've got to see a set pattern, they have expectations, it has to happen a certain way, and that's the only way they can be useful within the parameters. Of, of the limitations they have put on him. Others he can use for whatever. And they're more dangerous. Uh, they're more versatile and uh, they're more dangerous to the enemy. And um, I'd love to see an army of queens with one king. I think that's what the bride is supposed to be. Um, that, that chess game would be over real fast. Anyway, thanks for listening. Got to go now. Phone's ringing. More at fellowshipofthemartyrs.com.